This is the ink chromatography lab, which goes with lesson 19 in your friendly chemistry course. In this lab, your students will be taking inks apart and analyzing their constituent colors. Equipment that you'll need for this lab includes paper towels or coffee filters. It's best to get the whitest paper towel with no other inks on it that you can. An alternative to paper towels or coffee filters. A second item you'll need is a means of supporting your paper towel or coffee filter. We've just used a quart jar here and then a rubber band to keep the paper towel wrapped around the jar. If you use coffee filters obviously you'll use maybe a smaller container and then place that coffee filter down over the top of it. The idea here is to be able to suspend the lower edge of our paper towel or coffee filter in another dish which holds our solvent. Now you'll have options of using different solvents in the lab. We'll demonstrate here on this video using water as our solvent. Another solvent that you uh, can try is a fingernail polish remover and a third is a rubbing alcohol. Let's take a look here at the data table that your students will have in their textbook. At the top of the data table there's a place for their name and date and then there's a, a blank to put the solvent that you're using. In our example here we put water. If you're using the fingernail polish remover or, or uh, alcohol you would put those there. The first column on the chart is a place where you can make a mark that shows the color of the ink sample. So our first marker that we have here that we're going to use, I've gone ahead and placed a mark that shows the original color of the ink. The second column over says a description of the marker or pen and denote if it's a washable or non-washable marker. So in that space there for this pen, uh, for this marker, we would just write that it's a crazy art marker and that it says, I believe right here, it's a washable marker. So we put a W for washable. The third column is then where you'll write your results of what happens after we apply the solvent to the ink. Now with your marker, we suggest that you do choose both washable, non-washable, uh, permanent markers, and then even pens uh, of many different kinds to test uh, their, the solvent's ability to separate the inks that make up those various colors. So, we've got our first uh, color designated here. The next step is to make a series of spots of ink around the lower edge of the paper towel. Now, you don't want to hold the ink tip onto the paper towel because the ink will just be drawn up into the paper towel and you'll end up with a great huge spot. So instead what we'll do, we'll come up about an inch from the bottom edge of the paper towel and we're just going to touch the paper towel, let the ink dry and touch it again, let it dry, touch it again, let it dry and we'll repeat this until we get a very concentrated spot of ink on our paper towel. Right. Then we'll go to the next marker in our pile and this one here uh, is a, we'll start with back on our data table, we'll make a mark there and we'll write down, we'll look at the, it says it's a rose art and it's a washable marker and then we'll go back to our paper towel. Now we want to come over about an inch and then we'll again make us a spot about the same distance from the bottom so we'll touch let it dry 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 we'll get a very concentrated spot 
of ink there. We'll just repeat this process of putting spots all the way around the base of our paper towel. As you can see here, we've made spots all the way around the base of our paper towel and we're ready to lower it into the solvent. It's important to realize that you don't want your paper towel or, uh, to overlap so that the colors of, of one spot bleed onto the, the side of the other. So I've got it ready to go here. I'm going to set it in my dish and then I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to pour it into the dish. Now remember that we only want the water to come up to the bottom edge of the paper towel and as the water gets drawn up into the paper towel we may actually have to add more water to the dish. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in the water. Okay, and you can see here now the water is moving rapidly up into the paper towel. I'll rotate it around here and you can see this is what's called the front that's the where the water line is and you can see the action there on the inks turn it back here take a look at this one here doesn't seem to be a lot going on here with that one ah same here not very much happening with these two and yet again We've got uh, the front line right across here. I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, looks like my paper is up out of the water on this side over here. I'm going to lower it down a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to add a little more water to it. And that allowed the continue to travel as the front line moves up you can have your students observe these were two spots here from the same color green same pen and you can see we've got most of the green pigments staying down behind up at the front edge we've got a set of blue pigments that are traveling much farther farther than the greens These were uh, some spots from a, an orange marker and you can again see we've got some uh, orange pigments down here and the lighter colored inks are traveling farther. Let's go back and look on the other side here. We still have these two spots right here that appears that nothing, nothing has happened. So you might ask your students, what do you suppose is going on here. Why aren't these inks separating like the others? And then we have one here. Now this was the spot that came from this black marker here. And you can see it, it doesn't appear to have much. It's got some separation but not a whole lot. And then we have these here. This was that first purple marker that we used which was which was this marker right here and you can see we almost have shades of red and then we have some uh, blue shades dark blue sh violet shades right in there when you feel like the front has traveled uh, clear to the top what you can do then is uh, carefully remove your paper towel or coffee filter from your jar and we're going to move the dish aside and I'm going to carefully take it off here the best I can without wrinkling it too much and what we want to do is lay it out flat for your students to, to observe then and you can actually let them dry and I've actually taken them later and the students make uh, some uh, artwork from them 
So here we can see we definitely had inks that were soluble in water. This ink here was partially soluble. These appear to be totally insoluble. In other words, the water did not do anything to separate the inks. And then again, a series of very water-soluble inks over here. And again, we can see our front is actually still right across here and is maybe moving some still. Uh, if you fold your paper towel before you uh, apply it, you can you can almost end up with a kind of a fun design then of your of your work, and then your students can use it to uh, as artwork. Okay, now in your uh, text, there's uh, instructions on repeating this uh, using uh, the other two solvents. You would just go through the same process uh, when you uh, use the markers. It's a good idea to lay them down in the same order that you did on your first trial and then it makes easier in comparing the markers as you go from trial to trial with the different solvents. An extension of this activity that's included in your uh, teacher edition there are instructions on how to repeat this process using plant pigments and to prepare those plant pigments you'll take leaves uh, and petals of uh, various colored uh, plants around your yard or if you go down to a local plant, sh uh, plant shop or a florist uh, many times they'll have flowers that they're discarding or uh, foliage that's no longer useful for them and so you can dig in their trash cans and get all different colors of petals of, and leaves and then you bring those back and you uh, put them in a bowl and you just smash them. You just take a back of a spoon and just smash them, smash them, smash them till you just get a little wadded uh, bit of uh, plant material there. You can add drops of water to it if you like and you just smash it, smash it, smash it. And then you take uh, 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 either using a toothpick or a small dropper and then you would, instead of uh, making the ink spots here like we did, you would just uh, put concentrated spots of those plant pigments and then go through the same process again. And it's very interesting to watch those pigments as they separate uh, with the various solvents uh, here in, the, in this lab. So this is the chromatography lab, uh, which goes with lesson 19, where we are analyzing various chemical compounds. In this lab we looked at various solvents that a person might use to separate different compounds. Enjoy your time with your students in this fun, fun laboratory.